I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will take up three examples to master how to find extrema of two variable functions. The first question here is find relative extrema of fxy equals to x square plus y square minus 2x minus 6y plus 14. Steps involved are we'll take the partial derivatives first right that's the first step that is to take partial derivatives. So for the function f, if I take the partial derivative with respect to x, what I get here is 2x and minus 2 because y will be treated as a constant, derivative for y square will be 0, this and this also will lead to 0 partial derivative with respect to y is going to be 2y minus 6. Now to find the critical number or the stationary points, we have to equate them to 0, right? So let's find the critical numbers now. Equating these equations to 0, we get 2x minus 2 equals to 0 gives 2x equals to 2 x equals to 1. The other one is 2y minus 6 equals to 0, 2y equals to 6, y equals to 6 over 2, which is 3, right? So what we get here is one critical number, and that critical number is for x equals to 1, the y value is 3, right? So that is the first step. First step is you find the partial derivatives equate them to 0 to find the critical number. So once you get your critical number, you have to test whether at this point do we have a maximum, minimum or neither, right? So for that, we'll do the second derivative. We say second partial derivative test or second derivative test. So so in the second derivative test, we'll find the second derivative for these partial derivatives, right? So first one, fxx will give us 2. For y, we get, with respect to y, we get that also as 2. And the derivative of the first one, x, with respect to y, will be, will be 0, right? That's what it is. So for the second derivative test, we do have maximum minimum only if product of these two is, or we should say, uh, the condition is, let me write down the condition here, we will find the value of d, which is product of these two, fxx times fyy minus square of fxy. Correct. To remember this, you could also write in the matrix form. So that's easy to remember, right? 5xy, yx. Well, fyx and fy, y both are zeros. If you calculate fyx, you'll get that also as zero in this particular case or in any equation for that matter, correct? So in this particular case, you can find that the value of d is product of these two, which is 2 times 2 minus 0, which is equals to 4. Now, since this is greater than 0, we know there is a maximum or a minimum, correct? So to check, we'll check the value for fxx. Now, in this particular case, since the value of fxx is equal to 2, which is greater than 0, we, in this case, we have a minimum, right? So if this is positive, the partial second derivative with respect to x is positive, then we have a minimum at the critical number, which is 1, 3, correct? So that is how we can figure out whether we have a minimum or a maximum. Now, the last part of this is to find the value of this function, the minimum value. So let's substitute 1 and 3. So, so what is f of 1, 3 equals to? Substituting, we get 1 
for x and y for 3, we can write this as 1 square plus 3 square minus 2 times 1 minus 6 times 3 plus 14, correct? Or 1 plus 9 minus 2 minus 18 plus 14. And we can always calculate this value, right? So what we have here is 1 plus 9 minus 2 plus 14 equals to 22. So the value of this function is, the minimum value is 22, right? So we get f of 1, 3 as equals to 22. So that is how you could actually find the value of this particular function at the given point, right? Uh, let's recalculate. Seems to be a wrong value. I think we missed minus 18. So I'll recalculate. This is wrong. Uh, it is 1 plus 9 minus 2 minus 18 I missed in plus 14, which is equals to 4. So this is actually equals to, equals to 4. So, so if you sketch this function, right, so so you have a minimum at this particular point. It will look like uh, something like this, right? Where this particular point here is one, three, and four, right? This is your x, y, and this is your function f, x, y, which you could write as z, right? So that is how you can find the extrema of a two-variable function. So let's take another example. In this particular case, we found that the second derivative was positive and uh, the second partial derivative for x is also positive. Therefore, we got a minimum. So let's move on and do the next example. So now we'll find relative extrema for the function fxy equals to y squared minus x squared. So we are given the function fxy equals to y squared minus x squared. You can actually pause the video, follow the steps which we done earlier, and then match my solution. So the steps are, let's find the partial derivative with respect to x, which is minus 2x, derivative for y squared will be 0, partial derivative for y will be 2y, correct? So that is the first. Now, equating this to 0 to find critical numbers, you have to equate them to 0, right? numbers means that the partial derivative f of x equals to 0 that means minus 2x equals to 0 and that means x equals to 0 and if we equate y equals to 0 that means 2y equals to 0 and that implies y equals to 0 and therefore the critical number is 0 0 and if I substitute 0 0 here f0 zero, 0 is equals to 0 minus 0 which is also 0 right so in this particular case what we get here is that the partial derivative indicate that the critical number is 0 0 so let's do the second derivative test to find whether it is a maximum or a minimum right so the second derivative d, or the value which we are trying to figure out, should be equal to f of x x plus times I'm sorry, f of y y minus f of x y square, right? So let's calculate the second derivatives. So f of x is given to us. f of x x partial derivative, partial second derivative will be minus two. For here, f y y partial derivative will be 2 and f x y will be 0. So in this particular case you can see the sign of these are opposite right minus and plus that means we are looking for neither maximum nor minimum right. So it's very important to note if you have this kind of a situation which is opposite signs then the case is neither but we'll use the formula to figure it out. So what we have here is d equals to uh, minus 2 times 2 minus 
0 square which is 0 and that gives you a value of minus 4. Now since the value of D is less than 0 it means that it is a saddle point. Right, so it is a saddle point where we find that the second partial derivative with respect to x is negative, with respect to y is positive. So it gives you a saddle point. And therefore, at the critical number, we have neither a maximum nor a minimum, right? So, so in this particular case, what we observe is that at critical number, which is zero zero we have neither maxima nor minimum correct so so that could be the case also correct now let's take another example uh, hopefully they will talk about a maximum so the last example here is find relative extrema for f of x y equals to 1 minus x squared plus y squared to the power of 1 over 3. So I'd like you to pause the video now, try to do it yourself, and then look into my solution. The example is, find the relative extrema of f x y equals to 1 minus x squared plus y squared to the power of 1 over 3. So let's find the partial derivative with respect to x. For 1 it is 0, so we get minus, power is 1 over 3, we get 1 over 3 times x squared plus y squared to the power of 1 over 3 minus 1, let me write 1 over 3 minus 1, times derivative of our inside function with respect to x will be 2x, correct? Now that gives us the value of this is minus 2 over 3, so we could write this as negative, so we get 2x in the numerator over 3 times x squared plus y squared to the power of 2 over 3, correct? So that is the partial derivative with respect to x. Uh, now with respect to y, what we get here is uh, same thing except for the inside function will be 2y, correct? So we get minus 2y over 3 x squared plus y squared to the power of 2 over 3. Now to find the critical numbers we have to equate this to 0 right so we have to equate this to 0 uh, the partial derivative f of x should be equal to f of y should be equal to 0 for a critical number correct okay now that gives you a solution that uh, x should be equal to this is 0 that means x equals to 0 and that also implies that y equals to 0 and therefore the critical number is 0 0 right and if I write 0 0 here I get f of 0 0 as equals to 1 minus 0 which is 1 and therefore the point is 0 0 1 correct now we have to figure out whether this point is a maximum or a minimum or neither, right? So that's what we need to figure out. So we could do it a couple of ways. One way, of course, is that we can find the, the second derivative, right? The other way is that we can always use a logic. We are saying one minus something, right? So one minus something and this thing is always positive. So x squared plus y squared is positive, correct? So, so if I take any other point or any other value of z, x and y, which is close to 0, 0, we'll see that x squared plus y squared to the power of 1 over 3 is always greater than 0 for x and y not equal to zero. Is it okay? So if we take any value, negative or positive values of x, where x and y is not equal to zero, this is always greater than zero, correct? So that implies that the value of this function will be less than one for f of 
a b do you understand where a is not equal to b is not equal to 0 since it is less than 1 we can reason it out that this point 0 0 1 represents maximum value correct so at times you can use reasoning to explain whether the critical number is a maximum minimum or neither right so i prefer this reasoning for that particular case since uh, well the second derivative could be complicated right so i'll prefer this approach now with that we have taken three examples and we have seen how to justify that the critical number is a maximum is a minimum or neither i hope that helps feel free to post your suggestions and comments share my videos thanks for watching Thank you.